Hello and welcome to the Italian circuit of Vallelunga, where we bring to you the Italian Grand Prix. It's the first race back since the summer break, and it's Carlos Sainz, the Spaniard, who starts on pole in front of the Tafosi. So no, I didn't mention that yesterday during qualifying highlights. But oh well, why is my dog barking? Brilliant. Anyway, let's go through your grid for the Italian Grand Prix. At right at the back is another Italian power car. It's the RB of Liam Lawson with Nick DeVries, the other Red Bull team, in 19th. Sergeant 18th from Loney. He's back after a, a one-race absence. C racing in F2 last time out. He's in 17th in the kick Sauber. George Russell, 16th. Huge surprise for him. Snowder in the other RB. He's in 15th place. Magnussen, 14th. Championship leader all the way down there. That is huge. And that could worry him. He's only got a two-point gap over Charles Leclerc. Drogovic, 13th. Gasly, 12th. Stroll, 11th. Vesti, 10th. Ocon, 9th. Norris, 8th. Hulkenberg, 7th. Albon, 6th. Stephen Leclerc, he's in 5th place. For Stappen, your winner last time out for the first time in a lot of days. But felt... 500 and something I think he's in fourth place Piastri third Joe in second is best qualifying for a while and Carlos Sainz that I mentioned earlier on pole for the Italian Grand Prix at Vallelunga um, Vallelunga of course the first time it has ever ho hosted an F1 race let's go through some track facts while we wait for the um, cars to get underway it's got two main layouts the international circuit which we'll be using today and the historic layout from 1971 opened in um 1951 as a dirt track and then in 1957 as an asphalt track it's got two oh, three layouts and they're all fia grade two um it's hosts tcr world tour nascar wheel and euro series and tcr europe and formerly it held world touring car racing in italy um european truck racing championship six hours of rome the rome grand prix world superbike endurance world championship for the bikes freck or Formula Regional European Championship, Italian no, International GP Open and World Sports Car Championship, and also it does host a number of um like regional like Italian F4, Italian GT, TCR Italy, Porsche Carrera Cup Italia, all of them lot. And a Lamborghini Super Trofeo came here for their final last year, which is um, pretty cool. Um, we are about to go underway in about 30 seconds to give me some time to go through some more lap records. International circuits, 4.085 kilometres, 2.538 miles, 15 turns. Lap records, 123.475 before this weekend by Andy Suchek in a Super League formula in 2008. And then we also have the international bike circuit, which is a little bit longer, just a bit of a chicane. 136084. I don't think anyone really cares about them, to be honest, but I thought we came out. It's getting the formation lap underway in roughly 3, 2, 1, and the formation lap is underway to start off this Italian Grand Prix, or is it? There we go. Formation lap finally underway, and we are shortly going to get underway for the Italian Grand Prix. Carlos Sainz on Palmer, but not a formation lap, it's more of a. Um, parade lap because they like to drive very slowly. Anyway, let's go through your championship standings while we watch them go round. I'll go through your top 10 at least. Stroll in 10th on 26. Well, don't get to see what points they're on. It's Stroll, Drogovic, no, might as well go through them all. Schumacher, Van Dorn, Porsche, Iwasa, Eilot, DeVries. Now we're onto people that have done every single race. I'm just confusing things there, aren't I? Let's go through top 10. Stroll, Drogovic, Lawson, Albon, Vesti, Verstappen, Sainz, Norris, Leclerc, and Kevin Magnussen, your championship leader. And then constructors, it's RB, Kick Sauber, Williams, Alpine, Aston Martin, McLaren, Mercedes, Red Bull, Haas, and Ferrari, your current constructors championship leaders. And we've got a pretty decent race on our hands. Wait, wait for the information app to go around. I'm going to quickly go for a second. When the cars are back on the grid, I'll be back with you.
We're about to go around the final part of the lap. We will be starting very shortly indeed. Of course, Stroll did have that big accident in Le Mans, Le Mans Grand Prix at Indianapolis. Or oh, the corner in Indianapolis, not the circuit. He had been cleared to race, had had the whole summer break to um, recover. Of course, he probably wouldn't have been able to race straight away if there wasn't a summer, summer break. But he's fine now, and as the cars line up on the grid, we'll be ready to get going for the Italian Grand Prix. Five lights are going to light up. Sign starting from Poland for the Tafosi. It's lights out, and away we go. Who's going to get a better start? Joe Guan Yu looks, looks very racy indeed. He could actually take something here going into the first corner. But no, he doesn't. They're through, through Curva Grande towards Chimini Muan. They're all flat out, side by side. Piatti's going to try and make a move. He dives down inside on one of the house cars. And Nico Hulkenberg is wide, goes to one of the Red Bulls there. I think that was going to be, would, have, would have been Max Verstappen. But it's Joe Guan Yu who leads Carlos Sainz to lead Oscar Piastri. And then it's two of the McLarens, Norris versus Charles Leclerc. Bit further back. A little bit of a heads up. Our factor being our factors, but Sonoda and Magnussen in a Mercedes. And Lance Stroll. Don't know why he's done that, but oh well. Anyway, they're going through the next part of the track now. Through Sarafti. Sarate, there we go, that's how we pronounce it. Turn 8, the hairpin. Or bit, big bit of curb there for Science. Is Where's Joe gone? Joe's down in 4th now and it's Science who leads. Sorry, I meant the Claire, not Science. But anyway, next hairpin, we go through Sam, Semaforo. And then Tornatino. I can't pronounce these corner names. Anyway, we're going round. And, okay. Oh, there's a big off there. Mobile cars off. Safety cars out on his uh, Verstappen who's around. Verstappen been spun round. There's in honest and on lot. In all honesty, that could be anyone. I think it's Magnussen in the Haas car, Hulkenberg in the Haas. But the safety car is out on the open lap in Valongo. I believe it's the first safety car of the season. But yeah, definitely. Oh, we're in the safety car. has been a huge crash on the safety car. Lando Norris has lost his. Um, Joe's lost his front wing. Norris has lost his rear wing. That's huge for the championship. We'll get a replay shortly of what happened. But huge for the championship. Lando Norris has lost his front wing. Let's get some replays of what happened. Firstly, what happened with these lot? With Joe and Norris. On board of Joe. Doesn't slow the car down. That could be a penalty for Joe. That could be a penalty. And what happened to Verstappen then? Where is the Red Bull? Let's see that. Let's see what happened to him then. in P6 and is it the half car who just spins him? Yes it is. I mean it's not great is it? Is it Magnuson? I don't think it is Magnuson that spun him. It could be Albon actually. Is that Albon? Yeah it is Albon another car that's for some reason in the wrong car. Got the Williams helmet on though, so at least that's correct. Let's go on board of Albon and see what happens there. In all fairness, it could be just the um I'm having a car on his inside that put him off. Nah, he hit him. I mean, in all fairness, Hulkenberg isn't really helping matters. The initial contact does come from Albon on his former teammate, but I don't think I think that's on Hulkenberg. To be honest, I don't think this happened going round unless the Hulkenberg um, the Hulkenberg doesn't come in. Everyone's getting held up. The car could come out. Anyway, let's go back to live coverage and I will leave you for a few minutes until the safety car comes out. Comes in, sorry. 
life. So I haven't come into the pits, Piastri and uh, Joe. It's a bit weird, but let's go through your order currently. Of course, I'm assuming a few people pitted. And apparently, Ocon's out of the race, by the way. Is that true? Ocon is in there. So, a bit more rewinding. What happened to Ocon? So, on the opening lap. Okay, he doesn't want to come into the pits, and Sonoda does. That's what happens. Unfortunately. Big up our factor 8. Could have just let him back out, but no. It's forces off on into the pits with him. What a great game our factor is. Ridiculous, isn't it? Now the game can sense that Ocon is in the pit lane and pit him, but no, it just gets him back on track. It's so dumb, honestly. Be up to our factor. Anyway, he's now out of the race, unfortunately. So let's wait for it to catch up. Ten seconds. So if the safety car stays out, then I'll go for a little break. But if it comes in this lap, then I will. It's likely still on, so it won't be coming in. So I'll see you in the back whenever it comes in.
safety car will be coming in at the end of this lap and we'll be back green to resume the Italian Grand Prix been a bit lengthy safety cars for this because they've got to clear up all the debris that was at the um, crash site which is turn 12 uh, where known is Tornan Tornantino but the safety car does peel in and as they round Roma turn 15 for the final time under safety car conditions, Carlos Sainz will lead Oscar Piastri away. And once he crosses the line, we'll, we'll, well, we will be green. Championship contender Leclerc in third as well. Magnussen in fourth place. And we are green for the Italian Grand Prix. And it's Sainz who leads them away. Is there going to be any sort of moves through turn one, two and three? Curva Grande. Well, don't normally see any. They're almost going to be three wide. Going through Chimney 1, turn 4. It's Piastri who leads. Magnussen as well into turn 2. Turn 5, sorry, to go through Chimney 5. Uh, sorry, look, Chimney 2. So many numbers. There, there's two cars off. That looked like it could have been Russell and Maloney in the background. We'll get a replay of shortly what happened there. But they go through Campagnano. I know that's not spelled, uh, pronounced right, but I'm not Italian, so anyway. Um, that That's Lance Stroll, by the way, the greenish Mercedes. Looks a bit like an Aston Martin. Don't know why it's done that, but anyway. Piastri now leads um, Magnussen, who leads whoever's in third place, Djokovic. No, Slogan Sargent's in third place, fair enough. He is rumoured to be dropped at the end of the season by Andrea Kimi Antonelli, the young Italian. But Sargent, putting in performances like this, he's only scored his first points in the French um, Le Mans Grand Prix sprint race, where he won it, of course, in that crazy wet race, so he'd be on the side of the start on intermediate tyres. But anyway, Noah. Big send there from Magnussen. Now it's never going to work through Roma. Never in a million years going to work for that. Because they start second lap of green flag racing. The top three, the ones really close to each other at the moment, battling for the lead. Because we get a replay shortly of what happened with um, Russell and Maloney. It is Norris, the Piastri, sorry, who leads. I'm assuming that whoever crashed out would have caught up, considering how long we were on the safety car for. All oh, down the inside is Magnussen. Can he take the lead? Can Piastri fight back? Both of these drivers only on one race win. All oh, three of them actually are on one race win in Formula One. Piastri's at the German. No, sorry, Piastri's on two race wins. He won the uh, German Grand Prix last year and the Daytona 305 last year. And then Magnussen won in Russia, Sargent in Indonesia. Maxim the fourth, he's the one who's got the championship at stake. He's the one currently leading the championship by two points. Which in a Haas is massive. Never would have thought a Haas would be leading the championship going into the, um, the summer break. Of course, not halfway break, but a good amount of races coming up. We've got, of course, in a few weeks' time, the US Grand Prix um, going alongside NASCAR for that one. So that would be a bit of an earlier start than normal. Of course, Americans, because it's 9 a.m. start. When have we ever seen an F1 race start that early? But is it 9 a.m.? Yeah, I think it is 9. But anyway, Piastri still leads Magnussen. Charles Leclerc, he's the reigning world champion and another championship contender, currently in second point, second place. He's the one two points off of Magnussen. Anyway, let's go back to the opening lap under green flag conditions, where it was George Russell and Zane Maloney involved in the little tussle. There's someone in the pits, it's Hulkenberg. It's Hulkenberg out of the race, maybe. He is, that's such a shame. And literally, it's just come up on my screen that Hulkenberg's got a five second time penalty for causing a collision. And it looks to be. Ah, uh, so that's a shame. It's the same reason as to what happened to um, Ocon. Obviously, Joe Guan Yu has some damage and decides to bring Hulkenberg with him. Which is a big shame, because Hulkenberg... Um, I don't know why he can't just drive him through the pit lane. It's not that difficult, our fact, bro. It is actually a joke. Anyway, let's go back a bit more. I want to see what happened. I'm going to open that with Maloney and Russell. Was Zane Maloney replacing Teo Porcher for a few rounds? He hasn't very strong though, in all honesty. I, would, I wouldn't I would be against seeing Maloney stick around for the remaining races. And just, he's just driven off the track by Russell. What is George doing there? That could be a penalty. 
You've driven him clean off the track there. I mean, Russell is not making that corner anyway. So I've not got a clue why he's thought, yes, let's just take Maloney with me. That is poor from Russell. He just bullies him off the track there, pretty much. I mean, once they lock wheels, I think it's happening anyway. It's just inevitable. Say that one more time. In my opinion, going through here many soon. It only goes wide anyway. I think once they lock wheels, it's impossible. The only thing to really happen, but I still think it's Russell's fault. That is, I think Russell could get a penalty for that. In all honesty. Back live, almost. Almost live. And there we go, back live now. We're only in 14th, the people have pitted obviously. It's Logan Sargent who currently leads this race. Piastri is now down to 4th. Magdalen, if the scene, they in Denmark of course have never had a Formula 1 World Champion. If we had anything successful, is that Stroll designed to almost take out Leclerc? I think it was. Why have I heard that before? Lance Stroll taking someone out. Anyway, going through Roma. Turn 15, lap 11 of 75. How is Russell doing? 12th is that. Let's watch midfield action. I feel like we don't give midfield enough love and like, respect, if you know what I mean. But as I was saying, I know I said this came a penalty for. Uh, did I say it's 5 second penalty for Hulkenberg for causing collision? Or it, no, the 10 second penalty, sorry, for Hulkenberg, he's out the race anyway, so it doesn't even matter. And look at this old gaggle of cars. This is a nice little battle. And, oh, Russell. Oh, he got off the track, yeah, Russell spun round. Russell's round, G almost hit by De Vries there. Huge moment for um, George Russell. What happened there? Just lost it on the grass. That was a strange one from George Russell. Uh, while we were watching on board of George Russell, it's a 10 second time penalty for forcing another car off the track. I think that is very fair. And also got a 10 second penalty for Joe Guan Yu for causing a collision on the safety car. Definitely took out Norris. So, three 10 second penalties already, and. Oh, he just. I mean. You can't blame that on anyone in front of him, because there's so many cars there. Russell kind of just gets caught by surprise. Like, he moves to the left at the same time Drogovic moves to the left. I mean, you could blame Drogovic, but you could also tell Russell to just be careful, not be so aggressive. And in all fairness, I mean, it's dangerous. It is a very dangerous situation to be in, spinning across the circuit like that. But I don't think anything could have really been done about it, if you know what I mean. What a move that is by Russell, by the way. Round the outside. Oh, it looks like a driver which there. And here back, back comes um, De Vries. No, Verstappen, sorry. In front of George Russell. That's great racing here. Yeah. Almost contact. Is there three wide? Who's going to have to back out? It's going to be George Russell who backs out. Sides against anything this time. Maybe spinning across the track. And oh, Russell almost sends one. Russell's almost round. He sends the dive bomb for Sappen. And then through the S's. It's, it's, no, he's, he's still behind the Sappen, actually. Oh, I go to the track there. That will we'll probably let Drogovic through. No, it doesn't. Wide through the S's. Goes Russell. Oh god, half an hour into the opening round after the summer break, and I'm already tired. 
And there's Rogovic playing the one on Russell as well. It's currently Magnuson who leads this race, by the way. Just in case you were wondering. Russell on front of the Stappen, we got past him at some point in this lap. While I was looking at my stats. Anyway, how are the front ones getting on? Magazine still leads Sergeant. Anyway, go through Carvagondo. And now they're side by side. Sergeant is he gonna stay, take the lead. Yes, he is. Sergeant leads, and can Leclerc get into second place? These two, the championship contenders, side by side. Who's gonna take it? Whoever is in front will lead the championship if it stays like that. It's gonna be Leclerc who currently is in the championship lead over Magnussen now by a point currently. Great racing. Sergeant leads to Claire, who leads Magnuson currently. Perhaps 16 and 75. How are the midfielders doing again? I'm not giving on less. Watch. I mean, we can see up there if anything happens in the lead. Well, actually, yeah, they look a bit closer up front. Like around here. Leads a bit closer. I think the best do Lawson, Sainz, Paul. That's what's easier about. And I'll let, I'll let you watch them, you know what? Well, I'll keep quiet, you can watch them as Science tries to get past Lance Stroll. You watched it for about a lap. And how are they doing? Not too bad, they vested up to six now, trying to get down the inside of Lance Stroll. Not his teammate, he's in the Aston Martin strollers. And the one in front also isn't his teammate, that's Kevin Magnussen in the Haas car. Current championship leader, he's lost a few positions. How? I don't know, but he's in fourth. There's just one position. Is Leclerc is the one who leads, by the way, currently, in the Ferrari. I'm on board of Russell. Can we catch up to our one? 
be everyone else in front. Not doing too badly. on the truck there for some reason. I guess it's an app and contact between Russell and Albon. Dino drives Semba around the outside. No, there's even more contact. Russell over the back of Albon. He's already got a 10 second penalty for causing a collision, um, forcing Slay Maloney off the track. Maloney's already had two fifth places. That's the only place he's finished so far in the Japanese and French Grand Prix. And almost a spin there for Russell. I don't think he got help there. I think that's his pure traction. Or oh, Nestle with contact between him and Drogovic. He does lose a few positions there. Quick replay. Just to confirm there was no contact. And it was just him driving. But silly, yeah, he just drifts around Roma. That was a strange one. Not really a strange one, he just loses traction, I guess. A bit too really happy on the throttle. Anyway, I'm going to go, let them race, and I'll see you in about an hour's time. Drogovic has been caught up on the kerb there. Bit of um, silly driving, shall I call it, from him. Which is stupid dive bomb and getting on the kerb. So, in you know, any weird way that these sort of things happen. I don't know why I'm thinking to Russell so much. How are the leaders doing? Anyway, that Ferrari. Science, he's lost a few. Goodness me. Anyway, the top two in the championship currently 1 2, but the other way around, it's championship leader Magazine in, in second, Leclerc leading currently. If he had gathered up to 10th, I don't know where he started to be fair, but the two that crashed earlier on, I mean, they're way back. I think they have to pit again to be fair. Oh, this is the back of that little field. Rob Rich in 15th after getting caught on the kerb. Anyways, the dirt is kicked up. I'm actually going to go for a proper break there, I haven't gone for a proper break yet, but I'm going to go for a break now, because the last thing it decided by Drogovic.
Welcome back to Valunga. Sorry, I've been gone a while. Um, the camera side for shut off everything. But while I was gone, and while we were gone, huge incident. Charles Leclerc. See him currently in 12th place. He got spun round by Kevin Magnussen. Which if we get Magnussen gets a penalty, that could be huge for the championship. Replay of what happened. Let's watch the Ferrari. I don't know exactly what lap it was, so I was like, trying to sort everything out with um, cameras and that, trying to get the stream back up. Well, it wasn't cameras, sorry, it was um, it was just like audio quality, but it was to do with the cameras for some reason. I don't know what was going on, but anyway. Because you could see, see everything I couldn't know. This is what I was told. These two, you can see currently, Magnuson and Leclerc came together. I've been here. It wasn't there, it was a bit of contact though. Is it here? Definitely at this corner, yeah. Maxson goes round the outside, there's contact, Leclerc spins round. And that is the top two in the championship colliding and Nance Stroll also lost his rear wing, so he's now two laps down by the way. But let's see whose fault was this then. I mean, I don't think Madison left enough room to be honest. Let's see again. Let's slow it down a bit. I mean, Leclerc can't go anywhere, Leclerc can't disappear, and that's got to be Magnussen's fault, in my opinion. So you could be seeing a penalty if you remember, you, you don't have to serve it on next pit stop, you can wait till the end of the race if you want to. But yeah, Leclerc spins round. Well, I say that because neither Russell or um, Joe, Joe have pitted, but of course they have got that penalty, so I'm um, content with... Of course, the incident is under investigation, so we probably will shortly see an outcome. Piastri who currently leads from Magnussen and there we go 10 second penalty for Magnussen for causing a collision a lot of 10 second penalties I mean yeah to be fair he spun some around he was first or second is now 12th so yeah he was irrelevant no of course that was quite far back why is he so far back Him, Leclerc, and is that Joe or Maloney? It is Zane Maloney. Is that smoke coming out of the back of Russell's car? Oh, I'm sure I saw smoke there. Might be wrong, but Russell could have an engine issue. No smoke now, might have been a slight, slight blip. It has happened to anything happened to Rosling? I'll have a look. He got very close to everyone, and that was quite far back. someone there. Yeah, lock wheels and Maloney. That's why I lost so much time. And I'm sure Russell can catch up back up for everyone. So yeah, so Magnuson leaves, of course now with a 10 second time penalty for causing a collision with Charles Leclerc.
And that could be huge for the championship. Huge for the championship, that penalty. Yeah, about 31 to 75, almost to the halfway point now. Italian Grand Prix has flown by. We'll go through the stadium section. I mean, it's not really a stadium section. It would be if they put grandstands there, but they haven't for some reason. So currently, who is it lead? Is that Stroll? I mean, it's not going to be Russell, is it? It'll be Albon, if anyone. So, where did Albon come from, though? Yeah, it is Albon who currently leads. Oh, he came from, he hasn't really been in the front runners at all this race. Max and tries it, he's going to be able to get it done that time without crashing into someone. That's how you do it, Kevin. And then take the player out of you. Almost contact there between Albon and Verstappen. Just like we saw on lap one. At that very corner that caused the safety card. It's the front wing there, by the way, on the exit of the hairpin as everyone comes into the pits. Who's the wing that could be? So who stays out then? Pretty worth knowing. There's a Red Bull that stays out. I'm assuming that's the Vries, but Verstappen just came in. And also George Russell. So two cars stay out. Everyone else in. Who comes out in front then? Let's have a look. I suspect it can be more helpful. No, it's possibly not. So Magnussen, he's not near the front. It's the staff that comes out in front, then Albon, then Logan Sargent. What right about him? And then it's Magnussen, then Maloney. But, mm, I don't know about Maloney. He might have not appeared yet. Russell and DeVries are the ones that are currently leading. Can Russell get past the Vries and into the lead of the race before he ends up hitting? Let's have a look. Doesn't look like it. Looks like it'll be De Vries coming into the pits in the leaders. Yeah, you can see Russell there try something, but that was never going to work, was it? 
And it goes wide again. Very aggressive iron to the pitch there from Russell. The man who almost he thinks should be reigning world champion. He dropped off massively second half of last season. And now this season looks well out of it. Nowhere to be seen. Yeah, I'm nowhere near anyone. And reading them out quite quickly. Russell is having to repair a bit of damage, I think, which is why he's still in the pits. He's coming out now. Just behind Liam Lawson. I'm getting news that the Piastri potentially have a spin as well at some point. I think he might have. There he did. Who was that that spun him? It was a big kerfuffle for Oscar Piastri in third place. Is that Verstappen? It is Verstappen. He spins him. Could that be a penalty for Verstappen? I mean, if they're inconsistent, that's a 10 second penalty because it's the exact same thing Magnussen did to Declare. And can he keep, get, get back going? Yes, he can, thankfully. But that is the exact same thing Kevin Magnussen did to Charles Leclerc earlier on. So that could be a penalty. Oh, it should be a penalty, in my opinion. Verstappen and I did have a look at Piastri because there was an incident under investigation which was that very incident and probably anytime soon coming through a 10 second penalty for Max Verstappen which could be huge for this race if he stays near the front Of course, they can appeal these penalties. Is 10 seconds a bit too harsh? I don't know. I mean, it's causing a collision at the end of the day. Don't have to go any other replays really for the um Verstappens. And, and there we go, 10 second penalty for Max Verstappen for causing a collision. That is huge in this race. Currently the race leader has a penalty. 10 seconds. Remember Magnuson, Russell and Joe all already have penalties. Magnuson I think is in third place and the other two were well outside the point, so shouldn't affect them too much, but yeah. That is huge for Verstappen. So spinning Oscar Piastri around, he gets a 10 second time penalty. I mean, I don't think it's very fair that they can't. Um, hang on. Yeah, we're getting something through from the stewards. Let's have a look in a second. Piastri under 12 though. I've just forgotten something. A, a rule that came over in the summer break. If a driver wishes to serve his penalty, after the race, it will be half. So it will only be a five second penalty for Verstappen and Magnussen and Russell and Joe if they don't serve it in the pits. Okay. I'm guessing it's called if they serve the 10 second penalty now. Okay. Yeah, that's fair enough, I guess. So 10 second time penalty, uh, a five second time penalty if they don't pit. So, I mean, if they pit, they can serve it back. Which is fair enough, kind of making them. I don't know. It's a confusing one, to be honest. It's a weird rule, but... Yeah, I mean... It's called it's half at the end of the day, but um, I won't tell anyone that. Anyway, Albon currently leads from Verstappen.
How is Russell doing? Still in 14th? Yeah. Not really near anyone else. The Claire's over there. So maybe there's just behind him, really. I'm on a roll of his own. I think I've battled here. Maloney, Drogovic, and Sainz. Hey, am I making rules up here? I don't know that that penalty to be honest. We'll have to see. We will have to see. Because I'm not sure if that rule has actually been confirmed yet. I could be wrong, to be honest. Could be wrong. I don't think that penalty's been um, that rule has been applied yet, or even been confirmed that it's going to be applied. So it still could be a 10 second penalty for both of them for causing a collision. Go through Roma, lap 40 of 75, 35 laps to go. Starting lap 41 now. There is George. Still down there. Yeah, still nowhere near anyone, unfortunately. Yeah, no, let's see how the leaders are going. There's still Verstappen who leads with a 10 second penalty for causing a collision. I mean, it's harsh, but it's also harsh being some round, if you know what I mean. So. But the fact that you can't really serve penalties in pit stops, it's just added to your race time. I mean, it's harsh, but at the end of the day, they don't take them out, I guess. Marketing and Verstappen have caused a collision. So are Russell and Joe. Anyway, lap 42 now. How are Leclerc doing? I can't find a corner now. Russell, I think Russell might have just hit the wall, you know. He's driving very slowly. And goes wide through the S's. I think Russell's got damage, you know. He doesn't pit, though. But Snowden has caught up massively to him. What happened to him? Let's see if Snowden can get past him first. And Snowden, I think, with ease, will get past George Russell. And then he's still fine. If he fell, it was a big crash. Oh, huge crash. Huge crash for Russell. That is a huge crash for the two. Snowden and Russell. Of course, Snowden in the Mercedes car because of R-Factor being R-Factor, but that is a huge accident for those two. And the red flags are out. Red flag. Red flag. That is a big one for those two. Of course, everyone has to stop where they are. They're all going through the stadium section. Now the front runners. So we'll keep an eye on them. That was a big accident and must come back once. Okay, I think they are both getting out of the car, which is good to see. Both drivers are getting out of their cars. That was a strange one. What happened there? I do not know. But that was a big one. That was a big one. So what happened there then?
on board a Sonoda. Get spun round. It's a big rear with impact into the wall. Okay, they both are out of the car. Now Russell on board with him. Turns him. Can't be right, surely. Oh, strange one. I don't think he's done that deliberately in any way. Especially, he's not that stupid. Now nah, you can see the front left there. You can see the front left. Something's up with that tire. You can see it. It looks punctured. Like he's got some sort of puncture. And that could be why he's slowing down. Impressiveness of that one. It spins round a lot, just like Stroll last time out. With his crash into the wall. But let's go back a bit for Russell, because did he hit the wall? Going through the stadium section. We didn't see it on camera, of course, but. And yes, he did. That is how he got the puncture. Just, just the lightest of kisses onto the barrier. But obviously, one of the gravel is a bit sharper. And it's cut the tyre. But not massively. It's really just a slow, cause a slow puncture. And then... Ready some angles like this. I think it'd be the right one. Obviously not, I don't have a clue where that was on track, but probably a bit further down I guess. Anyway. Of course, we've got to clean up the cars now. Let's still go for a little break. And while we go for that break, um, the aggressiveness of the spins. Got to take a toll on those waffles and neck. And hopefully, Russell will be available for the US Grand Prix in, is it two weeks' time? No, this the date for this race had to be changed a few times. It was originally meant to be the 1st of September. But of course, it is now the 18th of September, so two weeks earlier than planned. And it's a three-week break, four-week break. So they have got he has got enough time. Also, it's 5 p.m. to start, not 9 a.m., not 2 p.m. UK time. I don't know where I got that from. For the US Grand Prix, I think it's... Because it's a weird weekend where spring qualifying on a Thursday, and then because it's they're using two different layouts for Watkins Then the sprint race is on the short track, the main race is on the long track. Um, what actually time is it? Half past eight qualifying. That's early. Then the only session actually on Saturday is qualifying, because there's too many NASCAR races. There's Xfinity practice and qualifying, Cup practice and qualifying, and then Xfinity race. And it's just not enough time, unfortunately. And they can't throw it in Friday afternoon. Because there's an ARCA race going on. But anyway, yeah. I'm going to go for a bit. And then once the cars are cleared up, we can get back racing.
Welcome back to Valalunga, where we should be going back, getting back going shortly. I'll keep an eye on these lot once we're going. Think about 30 seconds till we're going back, going back, getting back going. Um, but yeah. Uh, we are on the red flag, but they are replay system went down, so we're going to try and get that fixed for you. Hopefully nothing happens. And, um, yeah. So we're going to get shortly. Remember, Russell had that penalty, of course. That doesn't really matter anymore, but Russell and Snowder are both out of this race. And we get going now. So, that green is Albon, who leads decent margin from him over Verstappen. Of course, have that 10 second time penalty. That's in as well, the penalty. Bat not much battling going on around here. We're up midfield. Here we go. Maloney v Science. This will be a good battle. But Maloney easily wins it. Um, nothing. Um, the sergeant's now in front of Magnussen and Devon coming to the pits for their second stop to get rid of the soft tyres. Maybe they haven't lasted very long at all. There's a Discord advertisement on the banner there. But, um, so they want to stay out. Albon has stayed out, the staff has stayed out, sergeant has stayed out. Well, the oldest is not pit. I don't know, to be honest. Was which in seventh though. Science comes out in eighth place. That's the pole sitter, of course. Remember, Championship of the Max. And let's watch these up though. Cause these are probably gonna have to pick this lap. Yeah, I'm assuming he's got a pit, because everyone else did. Yeah, here we go. Everyone else in. Magnussen in, Verstappen in, Russell in, Sargent in. No, not Russell in. Albon in. Let's see where they all come out. I want to see De Vries. De Vries and the Vries Rebel double stack there. That's just the wrong thing to do. Here's Djokovic. Go on board with him, where does he come out? You can see he's coming out now. He's going to come out just behind, just in front of De Vries. No break there, but... In front of De Vries and just behind Verstappen. No, Vesti. So it's Albon who leads from Verstappen. Albon, these two are the two drivers that won at Le Mans. It was um, Albon in the French Grand Prix on the Bugatti circuit in Verstappen. On the big circuit for the, for the for the Le Mans Grand Prix, I cannot talk. Jesus.
So not much going on near the front, unfortunately. Of course, the pit stops do tend to cause boring racing for a little bit. And then close to another one. Piastri v Malone, this could be a good little battle. Aussie v the versus Barbados, two countries with very nice coastline, very nice beaches. And two very good drivers. Let's see how they do then. Piastri and Maloney. Lap 46 of 75. 20 to go roughly. Piastri got past him, I kind of killed that battle off. Um, Gaffey and Science Close, still on the same thing, like same things. Bestie and Drogovic, these two are close, and so is the top two eventually. But these two F2 graduates, both Bestie and F2 champion. No, he was second in the end, wasn't he? Two F2, F2 graduates. One straight away, and also two European Le Mans series drivers as well. They've missed the opening round, and they'll miss the US Grand Prix of European Le Mans series commitments. Of course, they both missed the Malaysian Grand Prix, being replaced by um, Schumacher for Vesti and Van Dorn for um, him. Drogovic, there we go. It is definitely the US Grand Prix they're missing. Do the Indian Grand Prix actually. If it is, it's like a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it is. Four hours on Magello, they missed the engine Grand Prix. And. It is going to be Schumacher replacing um, Vesti, but Drogovic is either going to be Van Dorn, the man who replaced him from Malaysia, or Jack Crawford, the Aston Martin reserve driver. I'd try to rather it be um, Crawford, who's a young driver, young talent, could um, Try and prove himself for an F1 drive in the future, which would be nice. Another American driver. Anyway, these lot all caught up together. Five now, really, because um, De Vries is in this battle as well. Anyway, just remind, remind of the top two do our penalties. in front is De Vries and Drogovic slowing. I think he had a bit of an issue going through that corner but he's now lost a few positions. Sargent in front, so is De Vries. And it's Albon who leaves his race. But it's not top two left penalty, it's second and third. I apologise. He should be getting the replay thing sh sorted shortly. Of course I have many replays, it doesn't matter too much. But Issue that. Thankfully. <laughs> so it is Albon who's run a win for the second time in three races and get his second, third, yes, so third win in Formula One. Of course, he won at the Italian Grand Prix last year at Monza. By a decent margin as well, but Verstappen's going to try and make a move around the outside. He's done the exact same thing. Both Magnussen and Verstappen have done the thing. Oh, it's Vesti, by the way, in third. Not Magnussen, sorry. Of course, that's the 44. Not the 63. 
because I've got so many cars for some reason R63. Normally, I take, I put my hands up. Normally, the Mon Grand Prix with a Staffan with an Aston Martin and the um, J Japanese Grand Prix where um, who was it? Gasly was in a Alpha Tauri or RB. Sorry, that was my fault. I put it out there. That was me being stupid trying to. Um, sort different drivers out, but this one I genuinely don't have a clue. I think Albon might be my fault, but everyone else, Snowden, Magnus, and Stroll, were not my fault whatsoever. We really don't get why it's done that. But anyway, are we not gonna have to pit again? Maybe as well. That could be a shout. Magnus down to seventh now. He's still doing not too badly. They're going to see a move into turn four. Or they're going to go side by side through turn one. Who knows? Try and go down the inside. No, he's not. He'll try to swoop round the outside. And Gasly gets the move done. Up into eighth place, the Frenchman. But Verstappen now leads this race by the way. I mean, you just saw that, didn't you? I'm so forgetful, honestly. But now, to be fair, though, the lead changes so much. So I'm like, people overtake all the time. It's a lot better than normal F1. Oh, watch this. Not, not F1. But no F1's on this weekend. That's one of the other reasons I changed it from this weekend. To, oh, it got changed. It was originally meant to be the first. Then it got moved back a week because it didn't want to be too close to US Grand Prix. And then, of course, one week break between New York State and Italy, and not the best idea. So, I it back two weeks, and then it went because there's racing on next week in Babalunga. I mean, it's today, this weekend, so yeah, I know there's a lot of racing on next weekend, so they couldn't really have another in double duties. Not like any big series, it's like national series. It probably wouldn't even use this layout to be honest. I'm not sure, I don't follow them and I don't really care about them. But Marcus um, Albon back in the lead of this race. Vesti, the only driver in this top four yet to win a race in Formula One. And can you in can you even count the to win? Only four people finished the race. Only four people actually scored points that race if no one was actually classified in that crazy British down for at Alton Park. Of course, um, this series of course doesn't allow any like circuits that have held F1 in the past or no have held currently hold F1 races to like post races of course can't get sparse still just doing all those circuits but also circuits that have been held in F1 fantasy also can't hold races but there are some exceptions I think Autumn Park is one of the exceptions because there was some weird issue with televising that race and it meant that um, it was only available from Paris' perspective for some reason. It was just a really weird race, so I think that is one of the races. Another one that's been televised is Aragon, and that is because some light issues of the track, as this happens back in the lead of this race, some light issues of the track meant that the race had to be called in only half points. Sonoma and Aston are also on that list because. Aston had some weird issue with fuel. Sonoma, I think, is the same. So I think they're also off the list. Or on the list, sorry. Because if you remember, Aston had to be shortened. Always, ah, oh, the two Albon and Vesti locked tyres just in the background there. That's going to hold a lot of people up. The Vries sent one down the inside. It's a nice little battle to watch. Currently led by Albon, Vesti, Albon, that's uh, Sergeant, sorry, not Albon, of course. In the Williams, Sergeant's come back, he's been out of it for a while. But um, what was I trying to say? Um, I have such a bad memory. Yeah, it's like those other circuits. Yeah, Aston, the race had to be called early because of weather and also a few issues as well, and then. Same thing happened at the. It wasn't the same thing. It was also the same fuel issues that happened at um. Where was it? I can't remember. Estoril, but I think in the sprint race that happened. It's not too much of an issue. They're not going to come back in the main race. 
Um, the same broadcast on YouTube of the British Grand Prix happened at the sprint race in Brazil last year, so that Rio ain't going to come back. It's just the um, issue with sprints, not the main race. What other circuits have we got? Of course, all the ones that didn't get televised originally, so Anadara. A lot of these can't come back yet, some of them haven't already been confirmed with the next two hander, but Anadara is one of them. Reem is one of them, Aero 27 is one of them. I think what else have we got? I'm not too sure, I'll have to have a look. But, um, yeah, I'll have a look now. Get the laptop out. I think that's it, yeah, there's Idris, Anadara, Reem, and Aero 27. And then. The Bend and Takisha Freeway have already confirmed the next year's calendar, and also, where else is it? Miami, who said Miami? Because of course that was only a highlight, they didn't show the whole race, they'll be going back there as well at some point, hopefully. Anyway, not a bad race so far. About 55 or 75, 10 to go, no, 20 to go, jeez, that's a lot. I feel like this race is almost done, like the first 30 laps flown by, and now we're not 55, I mean, it's the same thing pretty much. Not long enough to go in all fairness. It's Stafford, who needs Albon, who needs Vesti. Going through very much. There's this album now all over the back of the sap and this Vesti just behind full of them and everyone else is kind of back up a bit. Sergeant, the Vries, Magnussen, Drogovic and then Gatsy isn't really in this fight. I mean he kind of is. Everyone's quite close to each other which isn't good for the Stappen and Magnussen who have both got 10 second time penalties looming over them. The one Joe Guan Yu does got a penalty but he is miles back from everyone. And the Norris haven't really recovered from that um, crash under the safety car. Which is devastating for Norris, he did nothing wrong, he's what driven into. Can't really do much about that, can you? But these things happen at the end of the day, I can't really do much about them. I mean, you can, you can just slow down if you joke on you, but. Hmm. Back in there and lead out. Anyway, so Verstappen still leads from Ross um, Albon. And he's so annoying now that did those deliveries. Like it's, I really hope he doesn't do that for um, Watkins Glen. But... Oh well. I'm going to go in at the end of this lap just for a lap break. Just to get the um, ads rolling through that don't roll through. But I can't take it on my own through two hours at most. It's tiring. So I will see you shortly.
Hello, welcome back to Valalunga. While I've been gone, Carlos Sainz has just been spun round, I think. Let's get a replay to confirm that. Yes, he has been spun round too. Was that the spun him then? Was it Lance Stroll? Unbelievable, this guy. He's two laps down. Unbelievable. Two laps down, yeah, let's make a move and spin someone out. It's a pole sitter as well, that'll be a penalty for this roll. Might be even more of a penalty considering it's two laps down. That's science, unfortunately, the pole sitter in the second try to be spun round to out the Italian Grand Prix. There we go, back live now, Verstappen who leads Vesti. As it stands, Vesti will win his first race in Formula 1 with Verstappen's penalties. Don't know where Verstappen will finish, but it's anywhere near the front. Them coming back into the pitch, so I'm not assuming it's their final stop. So this happens, comes out, and he's still in front with Frederick Vesti. He used to be battling for quite a while. Where's everyone else? A decent gap away, but I think it's more than less than 10 seconds. So, still not great for this app, and they'll probably catch up anyway. Just Vesti dive down the inside and unable to. Okay. Um, penalty either stroll us has come through. That's a quick and easy one for the stewards. It's a drive through penalty converted into a 20 second penalty because, of course, you can't do drive through. So, it's a 20 second time penalty for stroll. That will not affect him one bit. He's already two laps down, it should be a good penalty in my opinion, but it's not too good penalty, it's only time penalties now. So, 20 second penalty for Lance Stroll, which will mean nothing because he's last anyway. So Vesti now in front, trying to win. He's been unbelievable since coming into Formula 1. Of course, missed the opening round in Malaysia, but still a championship contender. And it's unbelievable what this young Dane is doing. Second in Formula 2. Of course, he got put into a Mercedes while his championship contender from last year, Teo Porcher. Um, oh, contact there. Almost contact. Verstappen almost spins Vesti around. That can be looked at. 
the best he's in front anyway, he doesn't really mean much anyway, and it pretty much affects Verstappen, because now Drogovic is going to dive down the inside, and is he going to take the lead, or take second place, sorry, no, he go round the outside, and he will take second place, that's a good move from Drogovic, now Logan Sargent is behind Verstappen as well. Anyway, what was I saying about Rusty? Yeah, missing. Um, Porsche is in a kicks Alba now. He's basically a McLaren driver of IndyCar. But I mean, some people don't want to go to F1. I mean, at the end of the day, of course, he has IndyCar commitment. So. I'm only really focused on the F1 Fantasy now, to be honest, and I'm not really sure if K. Portier is driving this weekend. Because IndyCar did, uh, were at Bob Marit, um, Worldwide Technology for the whatever it is, Automotive 500. I was on last night. Not gonna say what happened. Okay, I haven't watched it yet. Uh, this has not been called as a month in advance. Um, I want to contact there. Drogovic from the lack of Vestin, Drogovic lead, Drogovic takes the lead. Vestin's gone down to third now. Lap 64 of 75, almost 10 to go now. Sergeant getting past Vestin as well, he's gone from first to fourth in a few corners. And here comes back, here comes, here's back, comes Albon. And Magnussen, I think, behind. What oh, happened to them? Probably in the pit stop. So, when it's a sergeant dive down inside of Verstappen. And can sergeant get past Verstappen? Not quite. But sergeant is showing so much pace. Before last time out, he hadn't scored a point in Formula 1 this year. But he's shown why he should not be replaced next year by Kimi Antonelli. <laughs> that young Italian. He's fending off the reigning race winner. And. Great talent in Formula One, I think they're able to show it with the reliability issues and just plain unluckiness. But Verstappen's got a penalty, remember, but Sargent wants to win. Verstappen's going to try and get past Sargent. I'm still unsure he almost flew over that curb there. But Verstappen back in front, still Rogovic who leads. Out of the current grid, let's have a look. Ones that have done like a decent amount of races, Drogovic is yet to win. No, Drogovic is yet to win. So, Vesti's yet to win. Maloney, he's only done two races in his defence. And, yeah, that is it. The only two drivers yet to win a race at Formula 1 that are full time are Drogovic and Vesti. So if one of them can win a race today, that'd be massive. And there's a move from Al um, Sergeant trying to get past. No, is that Magnussen? It would be Magnussen, yeah. Championship leader. He was near the lower end of the point scoring. Of course, whatever he finishes currently, it will be him extending his championship lead because the man who's two points behind him is outside the points, and same with Landon Norris when he's three points behind him. Verstappen now leads, trying to win two races in a row. Verstappen leads. I'm trying to get a little count clear up to see how many days for between. It's 
581 days between Verstappen's race wins. And now we've got to get another one the race after. Of course, Verstappen and Norris, the two drivers who didn't win a race for the entirety of the 2023 season that were full time, did every single race. Of course, there were others, but they obviously didn't do all the races, so they can't really be at fault, can they? This is having Grand Prix almost over now. I don't see the sap. Oh, of course, the sap, and yeah, I did just thinking about that. He got a penalty, hasn't he? So he cannot possibly win this race. I mean, I feel it's a bit unfair because Piastri, the man who he spun out, is currently, I think, P8. No. Where is he? P9. So he'll still be scoring points. Like, I think it's a bit unfair to win this penalties. I'd maybe going behind the person spun. I don't know. Well, I mean, did they serve them in the pit stop? Because you can, of course, serve penalties in the pit stop if you choose to. You don't have to anymore. I think so. I'm getting news actually. I can't see the penalty or anywhere on this list. The only penalty on this list is Stroll's 20 second penalty. So that means like Joe... That means they've all served their penalties then. And they're still up here in the pit stops. It must have served them. Yeah, I think they served their penalties, you know. I think the Southam can still win this race. And Magnussen, that's huge for the championship. That is huge. Contact again between them two, the exact same thing happened earlier. But yeah, that is huge. They, they've, they've served their penalties. I thought they couldn't serve penalties in pit stops, but they can. I've misread the rules yet again. I mean, surely that's got to be investigated as well. Because then maybe Lawson, because Lawson, of course, got a 10 second penalty in the. What race was it? The Mongrom 3 last time out. Maybe he served his penalty. And of course, I'm pretty much the only person doing the result. You haven't, got, you haven't got a massive, like, behind the scenes crew. So this is just me. So I'll have to go back and look at the footage to see if he served a penalty, and I'll come back to you. See that next time, I guess. A month ago, probably even that two months ago, this race was. I mean, just noticed Lawson's here about that penalty. 
he served penalty, he didn't need to be added on. So I'll go through the results and we'll be able to have that back in time for the rest gone through. And I need to go through all the races now because um the other races are penalties as well. Um, so yeah, I think we're stopping at the Malaysian Grand Prix, that's going to have to go. Because they've literally served the penalty, just, I thought they were coming to a pit then. Never mind. So it's still not long to go now with Sapper without that penalty, you already served it in the pit stops. <coughs> You know, I'm going to leave that for now. We will not have a updated championship standings. Well, you will, but just not with all these other penalties I've got to change. But, um, yeah, that is my bad. I'm not changing the rules mid-season. Um, these penalties that have been served, I just haven't realised they've been served. And the FIA is just... Because it's all automatic from the race results, and it's just... Yeah, I don't know. But I've got to manually change it now, because penalties that have been given, and they... No one's realised that they've served them. But they have served them, it's pretty obvious that they've served them. Anyway, we'll go through that in a bit. But we have got two and a half laps to go now of this Italian Grand Prix. Not on the at all. There's Drogovic now leads. Investi trying round the outside. That's Magnuson trying round the outside. And side by side, top two, Verstappen takes the lead again from Drogovic. The two that were fighting it out near the end of the Le Mans Grand Prix before they collided. Magnussen now in front of Drogovic as well. Drogovic fighting to win his first race in Formula 1. And so is Vesti behind him. And now Vesti's in front of him, Vesti goes into third place. So he takes the final podium position. Go through Curva Grande for the penultimate time. And Magnussen, he takes the lead. Magnussen, the championship leader, is in the lead of this race with a lap. Just so under two laps to go. And at the start of the, twist, the twisty part of the track. It's in the twistiest part of the track. It is still pretty hairpinny. If that's even a word, it definitely is not. About a lap and a half to go now, about. Not long at all. Can Magnussen win his second race in Formula 1 after winning the Russian Grand Prix last year? Or can Max Verstappen do it? Man, he was like 581 days to win after the 2022 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. The final round of that season. Before winning last time out at Le Mans over two months ago now. As they go through the S's and through Roma for the penultimate time. Who is going to win? Who's going to lead at the end of the next lap? And who will win the Italian Grand Prix? Could be any of these top three, really. Could it be Magnussen? Could it be Russell? Uh, Verstappen? Could it be Vesti? Or could Drogovic score something back? Verstappen, he's gained on Magnussen. He's going to try down the inside. He won't go round the outside. And Verstappen takes the lead of the Italian Grand Prix. So in 581 days and he's going to do it, it looks like. Two months on from his last win. 
two months on from the last race in Formula 1. Vessi, is he going to try and go down the inside? He does. But no, he has to back out of it because Magnussen's still going. And Magnussen keeps his second place. They've just got the stadium section to go after this corner. It's been a thrilling race from start to finish. We've had a red flag due to a big crash between Russell and Snowder. They're both okay, thankfully. But a big crash through Curva Grande on lap 40. Or lap something, lap 40 something. Anyway, they've only got four more corners to go now. This is the hairpin that Verstappen got spun round on the opening lap. That won't affect him. It's a spin to win for Verstappen. And as long as he can hold it on through the S's and through Roma, the S's are fine. It's just Roma to go. 581 days it took for Verstappen to win. After the 2022 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, he rounds the final corner. It's 2-2 two two for Verstappen. He wins the Italian Grand Prix. Kevin Maxson extends his chances to league by a big way, conditioning second. With Frederick Vesey, another podium in Formula 1. He's a rookie. He's had so many podiums. He's such a good driver. Drogovic in fourth. Another great performance from him. What a race. He had Sargent. More points. He took him before. He hadn't got any points. Paul Le Mans Grand Prix. He is now in seventh place. He finished in seventh place. Piastri, he was from mine at one point. He's an eighth. Some points with the Reeves. That's good for him. They're from finish now. I think they have, yeah. Everyone's crossed the line. What a race we had there. Anyway, championship standings, yeah, I've got to be resorted, of course, because of what I said earlier. But, Magnussen, he leads by, I think, is it 10 points? 20 points Magnussen leads by. Hang on, no, I've done something wrong here. Just make sure the points are all sorted out before I give them to you. So yeah, 10 points Magnuson leads by. So with Verstappen, he's in second place now. And there's 10 points between him and the next drivers. It's Leclerc and Vest uh, Norris. No, the car and Vest, he's on 55 points. And yeah, that's what I give Duke some like rewards for. And now sight on, of course, of people that need to be given points for the penalties that have been wrongfully given to them. So, um, yeah, we'll be back in three weeks' time for the US Grand Prix to sprint round Watkins Glen with two different layouts being used for the sprint and the race. And um, the results, yeah. Ocon, he was had a weird pit lane incident. Hulkenberg, same with him. Snowden and Russell, big accident that caused the red flag. Strolled two laps down of a 20 second time penalty. Causing a collision with Sainz, Joe 15th, Norris 14th, those who glided early on and ruined both of their chances pretty much. And the safety car bear in mind, Leclerc, reigning world champion, second of the championship going into this race, down in 13th. He was spun round in his defence, couldn't really claw anything else back. Sainz, pole sitter, he was also spun round, he's only got spun by Stroll. In 12th place, Lawson 11th, Moni 10th, another point finish from him, three races, three point finishes. For the rookie that's not even meant to be racing this season. De Vries, 9th, Piastri, 8th, Sargent, 7th, Albon, 6th, Gasly, 5th, Drogovic, 4th, Vesti, 3rd, but Magnussen, 2nd, and for two races in a row, it's Max Verstappen who takes the win. Be back, as I said, three weeks' time for the US Grand Prix at Watkins Glen. We'll see you then. Goodbye.